here at Big Gig with Brick and Mortar. Hi, I'm Brandon Azraf. I sing lead vocals and play bass. Hi, I'm Sandy Benetti, and uh, on my time out Brick and Mortar, I am actually the general manager of the Wyndham in Indianapolis. <laughs> so how's Colorado treating you guys this time around? Really good. We love Colorado. Okay. Yeah. Do you like the heat? Because it's getting pretty yeah, I mean, no, I love we're kind of, it's the best. Yeah, he, he loves so actually, in this hotel rooms that have uh, that are 70 degrees. He loves heat. He's got like the body temperature of a grandma. He wants you to be like 100 degrees. I want it to be cold all the time. See, I'm more of the grandma. Like, it'll be like 70 out of 9 in the winter coat. All, all girls, especially beautiful girls, <laughs> want it to be. You're welcome, dude. Yeah, keep those um, brands. <laughs> no, all women that I know tend to want it to be warmer. And all chubby dudes that I know, like me, and you know, my romantic Rafini, like to be oh, maybe. maybe a girl will talk to me if I sang something. They'd be like, it's weird, like before I just thought you were some chubby guy with a like, farmer's tan, and now I think you're like attractive. But only because you sang a song. You know, music really gets the bass. Yeah. It's true. I'm told this that. Guy. I'm still waiting. But, uh, It'll come. They will come running through that door. Yeah, yeah yo, I I was like Mr. Mr. Mom fucking stay at home boyfriend cleaning everything and I was like the shit but honestly when you're in a band it doesn't work. So I'm like new to being single in a band. And I heard that I heard that you do get girls but I'm waiting for that to actually happen. You know you do, it's true. But now you are a free bird. <laughs> no, all so I get open is, up your you wings get fly. fly. <laughs> I get I get Snapchat. So that because he said I get Snapchats when people are like, OMG, hanging out with my bae, about to devour them. I'm like, why are you why are you telling me that? You're trying to rub it in my face. Yeah, uh, I feel like you are. And then he like answers his phone and he's like, I love you so much. Our life is wonderful. And my romantic answers his phone and it's just like, I miss you. I can't wait to see you. When we get home, we'll spend every waking moment together. And I open my phone and it's just like, how cute is my boyfriend? Okay, so there was a possibility that you guys wouldn't be able to make it today with a recent setback in Indianapolis. Um, how did your fans rally together to get you here? Um, well, basically, we were completely and utterly done. There was nothing we could do. All of our samples were gone. All of my backups for samples were gone. All of the gear that I used is gone. Basically, we, we couldn't even play a show. And we didn't know what to do. And I'm sitting in this hotel lobby, and I, I was so, I'm very dramatic dude. Not a dramatic dude, but like when I'm upset, I don't give a shit what I look like. Like literally, I fell to the ground of the hotel lobby, and I laid on the ground. And I was just laying there. People were looking at me, and I'm like, what are we going to do? How are we going to fix this? And then my road manager, Feeney, like, well, why don't we just try mini yoga? Maybe your fans will pay for it. So we did it, and we're just blown away. Not expecting that, like, they would go that to that length to where we would yeah. get all the money we need to get all yeah, the Yeah, within, so within 10 hours. Yeah, it was under we had That's insane. All of the money we needed, and people keep donating to it. And now it went from like us just getting our gear back to now us being able to do the show that we actually wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, as you can see, like you walked in and I was like taping, like you know, plastic forks to the hay sign. I mean, you were taking selfies, basically. Yeah, but before that, like look at the back of it though. <laughs> it's all ghetto and taped up and <laughs> everything. We, we do a lot of stuff ourselves, but now we're able to do like the ideas we had on a grander scale as far as more props instrument stuff, better sound, better everything, and like a lot more crazy aspects to the show in general. Because we, we're performers, we like we like for you to come to a show and sweat, you know, mm -hmm. it's a good time. So. Yeah, it's happening right now, you have achieved your goal, sweat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell myself, be like, this pretty girl is so nervous around me, she just, she just thought it was I mean, look at shaking, shaking <laughs> in my boots. <laughs> my roommate's going to be like, that girl didn't care. My one, my one roommate makes fun of me, like anytime on the internet he makes fun of me, for everything to the point where I had to ban him from my social media things. Thanks. Well, shout out to your roommate. Fuck I do you care. Lions. Everybody, I do care. if you if you want to Google, Google Matthew Lyons, and then write fuck you to him. Okay, so you guys have previously toured with Imagine Dragons and Iconopop and Jimmy Eat World. Um, what was your favorite show that you've played so far? Um. Well, we did like we played shows with them. We didn't really like tour with them per okay. se. But okay. the best show. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We did worldwide tours. Those tours are great. <laughs> Imagine Dragons, you guys are awesome. But no, we honestly, we one-off shows. But the Imagine Dragons show was actually really good because it was after Lollapalooza. Oh. Like we have really good shows when we're back home. But the best show, in my opinion, 
like was last time we were here in Denver. Really? Because we had been there once in November. They had played our song on KCTL Locked in the Cage for like the whole time since we had been gone from, since November, March. And then we played in March, like all these people showed up and like singing all the words to the song, not just the singles. So uh -huh. it was like, and it was it was so far away from home and like getting that much love and to where it felt like a hometown show was super heartwarming to me. Right. My favorite show is different. All right, well, it's your turn to take the stage, I guess. I never shut up, so I never <laughs> But you have a lot of great shows as a band when there's lots of people and everybody sings your words, and that's really great, and it feels really, really special. But the one show that was the best show for me was actually the worst show for me ever. But it was the best show. I had just, like, got dumped, like, didn't know where I was going to live. We were dealing with all this record company stuff, like, all this stuff. And we're at this show was at the loft and it was like a million degrees and I was on stage and like this has never happened to me. I was on stage for some reason, usually I don't think about anything but just playing and I had a, a panic attack during a song because of all the stuff going on and I, I like messed this song up a little bit and I turned to John and I'm like, dude, I think I'm freaking out. This has never happened. So I'm like playing and talking, you know? And then I just didn't know what to do, so I like poured a bunch of water on myself, and I leaned into the mic, and I told the crowd exactly what happened. I said, listen, I'm sorry. I'm freaking out right now. My life is falling apart, but I'm going to try to lose two songs for you and do the best I can. And they just erupted so loud. and made me so, it was like, it was like having a panic attack and then getting a giant hug from like almost, you know, 500 people. And then just embracing me. And I felt bad because I was like, damn, I'm not like doing well enough. But they made me so, so, so happy and made it, everything feel better, like, just from that. So my favorite show is that, even though it was, like, the most terrifying show of my life. Because mm -hmm. usually I don't even get nervous or anything. I like being right. on stage, but it was so scary, but it was so awesome to, to know that I had that support of, like, all those fans. All right, so with your EP, Bangs, you have evoked quite the mix of emotions. Um, what's a song that personally speaks to each of you the most, I think, out of that EP? Um, for me, um, the, the song I vibe with the most, and being that I've been friends with Brandon for so long, like he writes all the words, I know where, where his heart is, I know where it's coming from, and I connect with all the time we'll fight, but the other, uh, I'll be like, don't you know where my heart is? <laughs> the, uh, keep his place beautiful, is because like the, the lyrics, like there's this one part at the end of the song, we can turn all the good things into bad things if we just try, and, and, it, and, it really, and it's really, that's the truth, like if you really try, you can really Put, anything you try, you can really put your mind to it. Like, you know, and right. I really connect with that, and I sing all the words I'm not playing. I'm not even really saying it, so yeah. sing to myself. <laughs> um, my favorite song isn't even one of our most popular songs, but all the songs are like have to do with either my like political views or life views or things that have happened to me and everything. And the song "Old Boy" sounds like it's this upbeat, uh, fun song just about you know, being an outlaw type of person and everything, but it's actually a letter that I wrote, you know, through song to my father because my father was a diamond smuggler, a con man. You know like Ocean's Eleven? Mm -hmm. He was like a Moroccan Danny Ocean. Oh wow. <laughs> Everybody loves him, warm guy, but at the end of the day he was Danny Ocean, so he's gonna rob your casino. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but he's banned from America. He's not allowed to come back to he's got deported, he's not allowed to come back to any affiliate countries or anything like that. So I wrote that song to him because like, he'll never get to see me play. Right. So that song to me is very, very important. And every time we play, I kind of talk about it a little bit now. But it's one of those things where when people hear it, they never think that because it's so upbeat sounding. Right. But it's actually very depressing. <laughs> so when I say, like, I heard you made a million, I'm talking about, like, literal what he did when he was younger and when he left when I was 10 and stuff. And when I say, like, you know, down by the river, I'm talking about straight to Gibraltar because that's where he ran to when I was young and stuff like that. So. That song in general is a huge deal to me. Um, hopefully it becomes a huge deal to other people. Mm -hmm. But it's just one of those ones where like, it's not the single, but to me it's personal. Right, right. Okay, I'm well. like, got all heavy, everyone's all sad. Now. I know, now it's... <laughs> uh, Way to go, dude. No, my dad's awesome, though. If yeah. you met my dad, you'd be like, I don't even care you look at Barack Shrek. Let's get married. <laughs> all right, I'll just marry your dad. That's probably a great idea. <laughs> he's, he's one of those guys. I don't know. Uh, all right, well, do you guys have any new music in the works or any future tours being planned? Uh, we have 
a bunch of songs done. We're just figuring out how we're going to release them and when that's going to happen, like when that's all happening. Um, and as far as tours, we submitted for a bunch of tours. And hopefully some of you big bands out there want to feel really bad for a little guy to take us on tour. We have a string of dates coming up in August in Manchester Orchestra in the Lovelies. And uh, that's going to be super fun. Yeah, that would be um, really good chance. We're trying to book for like the fall yeah. and then mm-hmm. after that. So. Right. That'll be exciting. We will we will keep our prayers Sweet. up and out to you guys. Nice. Well, that is all we have for you guys today. It's been great having you. Thank um, you for having us.